So guys, I've not actually shot in a train station before and today I'm in Elizabeth Line and uh, so this this line is particularly so special. Uh, I was dedicated for the coin and um, yeah, today I'm just talking about events. So event photography as it were. You know, I've heard a lot of things about event photography, people having uh, different opinion about event photography uh, people say different things about event photography to cut the long story short i think some people think is very easy why some people think is um it's very hard to do event photography and today generally i've just been talking about event photography in hall and i'll be showing you guys some of the pictures i've taken over the years the idea today is just to demystify some some ideas that people have overall so i want to say i started photography a while ago and event photography was one of the first thing that got me to where i wanted to be i'm actually shooting a log today and i feel like i can just raise let me just change this a little bit okay guys so this looks pretty good now i think yeah just it looks pretty good now yeah i think the exposure is right now okay so let me back to what i was saying so i uh, you know when i started off started doing event photography i mean it's a good way to start if you are trying to start your photography journey it's also not a good way to start in some instance um so let me tell you something first of all let's define what is event photography itself so event photography is a, a genre of photography whereby you have to capture emotions um, and i would say candid moment and document them or of a particular event such as birthday party corporate event uh, uh, private functions uh, naming ceremony name now they these are part of event photography you are going to be uh, likely be photographing and these are very intimate moments for some people in, in in some cases if you're doing like a product photography for instance uh, it might be kind of different sometimes because you want to focus on more on the details of probably of the of the product itself and all that but overall event photography you need to be very hands-on know when things will happen you need to be uh, you know to be quick you need to be agile uh, it, it, you know it's a run and gun uh, situation so you just have to be very mobile as well so one of the first thing i realized that people think about event photography that might not be right is that people think generate a lot of money i mean that might be true but in some ca cases that is not true for example when i had event photography i was doing a small event now you know it depends on what you're doing i started with small event even family i started even my first few uh event that i did i did it for free basically like i didn't i wasn't able to get any kind of money for them so I was able to give people just free of charge and it was just for me a learning curve. I just wanted to learn. I just wanted to be able to produce amazing, um, you know, amazing photos and to be able to build my portfolio, then send that portfolio to people who wants to hire me and so that people can think about hiring me overall. And for me, that worked. And if you're, if you're hearing this and you probably uh, you want to start your photography journey or you're thinking of area to start first, I'm thinking, saying to you that event photography is good, but generally in photography, you might need to probably shadow someone, uh, work with someone or even work for free to start with. I mean, when you're starting, just to build your portfolio. And that's the first thing I did. And, and I think it, it actually worked for me because it was when I was doing this free event, people actually thought I was being paid. I actually asked someone to say, oh, can I, somebody told me about their event, oh, my event is happening. I said, oh, can I come and take a photograph in your event and just, and I'll give you the photos, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to give you photos. I was like, oh, wow. So you do photos. And I'll say, yes, I, you're not going to pay for it. And I show you that you're going to get good photos and all that. I was just like, I was, I was saying that I see I was so good, but really I was just trying to build my own confidence. But at the end of the day, it went well. And the person was very happy. And from that event, I got a couple of people that called me uh, for actually say, oh, come on, help me do my event. But the problem therein is that, you know, when people speak to each other, the people that was doing the event must have spoken to the person and the person was like, oh, you did it for free for them. So why would you want to take this amount of money, blah, blah, blah. So that's my other point. Like you might end up doing free, then that will lead into issues whereby you're not getting paid as much as you should. And this is one problem that you might face with event photography. I'm going around London today um, and I'll be going at a different stop um, right now in central London. 
I'll be going to maybe zone three, zone four. Um, I'll be sharing with you guys my journey as I go along as well, so that you guys can see. So that's the first thing. So uh, I'm going. I need to pack my equipment right now. I need to get on the train, and then this review will not be complete without us talking about gears and i think gears are very important i mean they they determine a lot when it comes to um the success of your photography in in to, to a certain extent and so let me let me just talk about my own experience what i'm going to talk about is what has worked for me over the years and so let's talk about the the camera first okay basically i think you can use any camera that you so wish you can use any camera i think any camera that is designed that means that was developed between 2017 or 2018 up to date will work for most event in my own view in, in fact if you if you go even up to like 2020 uh maybe 2012 14 15 all i'm saying is that the camera itself is not like gonna be a massive massive problem uh, but if you want something that is good in terms of autofocus because now everybody has moved from like manual to autofocus like you want to achieve your autofocus faster you want to be able to get the picture and make sure you're nailing your focus i think you have to go for a camera that's released between 2018 and now any camera that you buy between 2018 and now i think will be good i mean looking at canon sony nikon and even fuji and these are gonna be great camera whichever one you are i i use sony a7 4 i used to use sony a7 III, and also i used to use 7 a7 uh r4 so but now i'm currently using sony a7 IV and sony ar5 or for my event basically now let's talk about lenses for me if i want to advise someone who is starting off right now we go for 20, 24 to 70 then 70 to 200 but for me personally what i use is i use the 50 f1.2 i use the 24 f1.4 which i'm currently filming on right now and i also use the 85 f1.4 as well and i also use the 135 uh, f1.8 these are lenses i use on a regular basis when it comes to event now i have one other lens that i use but i don't use it all the time but i do use them a lot it is sony 14 f1.8 now that lens sony 14 f1.8 is very wide but i use them because i i get to do some events in some tight places like a small room some places and you need a wide lens to be able to capture the whole event and tell the story because you are documenting this event and you want to make sure you get the best out of this event so for me those are the gears that i use in terms of the flash i use i'm currently using right now the godot v1 and I'm using the Godox V1 Pro. And on top of it, I just, you know, also I'm using right now the, the Max Sphere right now, just to help me to bounce the light. Before I just used to use the, the bounce count on the flash itself. Um, but yeah, these are the small changes that I think to improve myself. And I think this can also help you to improve your own photography. Now, if depending on the event I'm doing, sometimes I use my Godox AD600 Pro and my Godox AD200 as well. Uh, these are flashes that I use for event depending on the time and space. I mean, if I'm doing like, let's say, red carpet, you wouldn't have much time for setting up like 600 Pro with an umbrella. You don't have time for that. But if I'm doing like just a normal event, but you know, like a VIP event, good event, good money and all that. So I'll set up everything in terms of I can use my Godot say this is on a pro, Godot uh, 200 pro, make sure that I get all the pictures I, I, I need to get. The one thing that you have to bear in mind is when you're doing these event photography, most of your edit to be probably in Lightroom uh, on, and Capture One. It's not something that you take to Photoshop and you start editing for 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 20 days for 40 days. So you need you know they also need quick turnaround, and that's one also one another issue with shooting event with event you need quick turnaround. So you must be able to know. So what I do in most cases is I try to get the best. At the event i try to get the best image i make sure that my light is set up properly i arrive at the event early to look at this car i scout the place i look at where i can place my light for me i want to make sure that i get the good image the exposure is correct the image is coming out they're looking good already so i don't need because i know i would be doing excessive editing because this are events you're not going to be doing excessive editing so you must make sure you arrive early you must make sure you get your lights 
you know, to where you want it to be and make sure that, you know, the picture is what you want them to be. Most time when I'm coming out of my event, the pictures are already looking fantastic, like they are looking good. And so I'm just happy. So all I would just do is just either put, you know, take them to Lightroom, maybe, you know, change the white balance sometimes, increase or decrease the uh, shadows or the highlight, just increase it a little bit and just do some little bit of creative work. And, and I can coil all of the pictures, like I just apply the same preset, preset to all of them at the same time. So probably this could take me, instead of taking me days, it could take me a day or two to be able to finish all these ones. Um, so you just need a proper workflow. Once you have a good workflow, I mean, you, you can get away with a lot of things. What is important about event photography is that you need a workflow, a workflow that works for you, something that you can repeat and but it's effective. And so you know that, look, I've done this, I've done this, I know how to do this. You set things right. And so when you go for this event, you get your pictures, you put them through the to, through your lay down uh, uh, process and you know you're going to get a fantastic result. Once all that is done, you are good to go. And this is the way I do. And I know that I've, I can repeat the process. I can repeat the process as well. Because sometimes if you try to change the process, sometimes a lot will go wrong. And so just stick to what you know how to do best and do things in stages. All I'm talking about, all these things I'm talking about is taking me almost more than 10 years to to perfect so if you're just starting off think about that don't just start to change things in one day or two days think about it just go gradually you know face one side at a time and make sure you get something right get your skills right first get your organization right first get your gears get the lenses that you use Try all the lenses and see the one that fits for you. There are so many camera that come in that borrow people lenses and camera right now. Instead of you buying those lens first or uh, or spending a lot of money on on cameras on lenses, why not try them first? Try them out and see if the one that works for you. People used to tell me that oh, uh, 20 to 24 to 70 is the best for them and all that. But I I eventually started using Prime because Prime lenses works for me and as it has been working for me for such a long time. I'm not saying I will not buy. Uh, a zoom lens but that's what works for me so you try these lenses out and see what works for you so if you're enjoying this content don't forget to smash that like button the other thing i want to talk about in terms of event photography in is how to get booked so if you want to get more booking basically you have to make use of all the tools available to you in terms of making sure like you know word of mouth is very important so make sure that each time you get to shoot an event you do it properly you try your best you do your best and you, you know you give them um or like you just make sure you give your best and then you can bring your card along so what i do most of the time is bring my card along and i distribute my card at the event and i go and if you are working with someone maybe shadowing with someone you might need to ask for permission the person might not like that you doing that so i think it is better you kind of just just don't go and start distributing your card to people whereas you follow someone into that event you, you came to shadow someone an event i don't think that is right so you need to speak to that person if and you will know yourself if it is the right thing to do if you work with someone and you think oh this is not the time to ask for that person at least you need to gain that person's trust first of all you must have worked with the person for a while and the person notices that you're working and you know the right time to ask that kind of a question don't just start on the first day and you want to start to distribute your card i don't think that is the best idea so that's one way the other way is having a website you know, there are so many um online platforms that you can build your instagram make sure you you, you build your uh, linkedin you build your facebook and you can start to having a community in, in there make sure you post on there regularly but above all i think it is also important that you have your own website now i have my own website i also make sure i put a lot of pictures on my website but i try to put my best work so this is very important for me and for all of you now if you're going to have a website and you're going to have uh, things like instagram make sure that your best work are in there don't just put everything there do just populate it. when i say my photography i just put any kind of photography i just put everything in there and i realized that it wasn't the best um what i did was in the beginning was just 
put in any pictures there but i realized that that was not the best option so as time goes on i start to learn from the situation then i started to delete a lot of pictures and i put in the best in them i still feel like i should take some pictures out of my website and my um, instagram but i feel majority of the pictures there are good and they are very good enough but you know if you're at that stage where you don't have a lot of pictures you can actually ask people like you know there i know people like other photographers that are just starting off they will ask maybe uh, some other people they will dm them and say look uh i i want to use some of your pictures just to post it on my stuff for now and let me tell you most of the photographers some of them will just ask you oh you can go ahead and use that images and some photographers also when they do their reviews uh, maybe on their instagram they normally have some pictures raw pictures that they'll put in the link they will ask you to click on the link you can get the raw pictures you can ask for permission as well some of them give you the full permission to kind of use those pictures so you just edit the, the way you want to edit it and just put it on your platform and also you can use that so i think these are ways that you can make sure that you have an online presence and then when people because when people are searching for you it is important they are able to find you online because these days everything is online so imagine if you tell me about your company you tell me about what you do even if you don't you're not your uh, fully fledged company yet you're just starting off at least i want to know that you exist because if you if you ring me or you give me a call or you send me an email i want to search about you and find something about you and so you should have some kind of photos or somewhere on instagram on if you cannot afford a website to start with start with your instagram make sure you organize your instagram make sure it looks good make sure it looks beautiful and also with other platform maybe facebook and make sure you post at least not every day but regularly at least once or twice a week if you don't have a lot of events or maybe once a week and this is why i said going back to what i said earlier on you don't have to wait for an event you can just go out and practice and shoot something take photo of something document something because in you doing that when you post that people will know that at least this person is active what people want to know in most cases are two things they want to look at your work and they want to see whether you're active because i've been on people's pages where i saw that the last time they posted was like two years ago and uh, they have good images but two years ago is a long time that they've not been active so i don't know what's wrong with that person i don't know whether they are okay whether they're not okay and that may decide whether the person kind of giving you a call or not so make sure you are very active and you're posting a lot on your website so i think that's another thing and the other thing i also want to talk about in terms of um event photography is that you also need to make sure that anytime you go for um an event and you probably get booked for an event you need to know the people that are important we call them the vips you know to know who are the vips there's a vip for every event so so if you are photographing a birthday the number one VIP for that birthday is the birthday person. And then followed by their family members, followed by their friends, followed by their grandparents. Their extended so even if you don't know anybody, make sure because most people, their grandparent is very, very important. I've gone for a, a wedding before and, and I've done a couple, number of them that you will end up seeing people asking you. The celebrant or the people getting married, they will say, oh, I hope you got enough images of my grandmother or for my grandfather or my uncle or this. Because these people are very important. And how would you get to know all these things? So normally when I set up to meet my client, we normally have a conversation. If I don't know them before, I set up probably a Zoom call. We have a conversation. I ask them about things. Uh, generally, I want to know about what is important to them. I want to know that I want to know about generally what they like. And when they are speaking about those things, you don't even need to ask them this question. It will come automatically when they start to talk about people that are very important in their lives. And once you know the people that are important in their lives, then you'll be able to know the kind of people that you need to photograph at those events. Make sure that those people that are important in their life, you you make sure you cover them extensively. I've had a good journey when it comes to event photography, and I've loved it. Now, there's something about me is that I, I enjoy photographing people, and I've said this over and over again. I can't overemphasize it, and that's what got me into photography in the first place. I just love seeing people happy. I love to take pictures of people. I just want people to look back at their images and love what they see. I want to just want to be part of people's, you know, life and just, you know, generally. And I, I, I want to see a picture on the wall, on a billboard and everything. And I say, oh, you know, I took that picture. And just 
remind me of what I have taken. So this is my own motivation. Like I love photographing people. I love seeing people happy. I want to be part of people's journey, stories, events, and things like that. And so you must also have a purpose in mind. I think that's very critical in any areas of life. What is your purpose? What is the thing that you find most interesting about photography to you? Photography to different people might mean different things. For some people, it's strictly business. They just want to use to as a medium of making extra money and they're not really interested in so much of other things. And that is fine as well if that is what your motivation are. But the problem with that is um, if you don't get jobs, if you don't get enough clients, you might get frustrated. So that is one thing you have to look for. But there's nothing wrong with anybody's motivation in terms of what they want to do. But for me, that is my motivation. I want to be part of people. I want to be part of the event. So understand your own motive, understand it, and make sure you're able to handle your emotions as well. I think I've been able to say a lot of things about event photography. I think it's a good thing when you start with event photography because it will teach you so many things. Event photography taught me patience. It taught me to be more an extrovert in a little way because I'm completely like before I was really an introvert. So it helped me to be a little bit to be more um, extrovert. And also beyond that also, uh, you have to be in front of the people all the time. So, so friendly, approachable sometimes, you know, generally be good to people and be nice and, you know, also be focused at the same time. You have to be focused because you can miss your target. Imagine you're talking to someone and you miss the first kiss wow you're in trouble you have to be focused as well so yeah oh, sorry guys for the noise um so thank you guys for joining me on this review today if you like this review please smash that like button for me and you know if you have not subscribed to this channel please do subscribe as well and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one on the next time i say i'll see you guys and i say bye bye